Good morning, guys. I'm the Tech Prepper. First, I hope everybody's doing well and staying warm. Uh, we're finally in the 40s out here in the Sonoran Desert, so we're filming inside today. And today we're going to do a video that will likely not be for everyone. We're going to talk about a 15-year-old GPS unit. It's the Garmin Nuvi 350, and there are a handful of reasons why I wanted this for my preps and for my uh, radio equipment. Uh, first and foremost, I love reclaiming old new stock uh, on eBay. I have uh, a few things in my collection that go back to uh, the mid-90s, if not earlier, like vintage computing stuff, uh, which I really enjoy. It takes me back to my youth. Uh, we'll do an unboxing. Uh, it's really fun to open this stuff and see, uh, take a snapshot of like what 2005 uh, looked like. And uh, yeah, I'm curious to see what's in the box. The second reason I bought this was the price. I paid $30 or less on eBay for it. Um, loose units, I believe you can get sub $10, so the price was right. And uh, really the, the major reason I bought it was that this is roughly the same time period as the line of the Kenwood D710. And that's the radio that I just recently installed in my Jeep. And while that has great support for APRS, it has uh, GPS included, the one thing it doesn't have is a good way to visualize the stations on a map. And I've done a number of different experiments with APRS Droid on tablets and iPhones, and while it works great, I wanted something a little simpler. And um, I wanted some other capabilities that APRS Droid does not have that this actually has that works wonderfully with the radio based on my research. And um, I guess another reason for this along the prepper lines is uh, I like to have uh, backups uh, of everything. So there's that old prepper axiom of uh, one is none, two is one, and uh, this certainly applies. So in the Jeep I have uh, local maps from my area, I have a printed atlas, I have my smartphone, obviously, for more map capabilities with offline maps loaded in the area. But this is fully offline. Um, really, how often do the maps change in an area? Uh, granted, I can upgrade this to some extent. Um, the maps have gotten quite a bit bigger, but I can up update, at least in my area, to the latest 2020 uh, version of the maps. And this will give me the ability to have turn-by-turn -turn directions without any type of infrastructure in place. So that very much appeals to me. The real reason I got this though was for the Kenwood D710. Uh, this has one feature that I've seen that is just absolutely amazing. Of all the garments that are on the market, this one actually properly will put the stations that are discovered uh, by, by the radio onto the map without any kind of duplication. It will also load all the stations it finds into your favorites and allow you to do direct navigation. And uh, we'll test that out here at the end of the video. Um, I'm hoping it works because that's the reason I bought this more than anything. But really a fantastic way to reclaim some old technology, have a solid prep for mapping and uh, driving directions, and be able to have something that's fully offline and off the grid in my opinion. All right, let's take a quick look and do an unboxing and uh, yeah, let's see what GEMS uh, 2005 has in store for us. All right guys, let's take a look at the Garmin Nuvi 350. As I mentioned, this is old new stock that I purchased on eBay for about $30 and it's a 15 year old GPS at the time of this recording. It was released in Q4 of 2005. And again, I bought this primarily to pair with my Kenwood D710, and that's pretty much the only reason to go with a 15-year-old unit is to have really good feature parity between my radio and this unit. So uh, in addition to this, I purchased two other items. One is a cable that will connect from the Kenwood D710 to this Garmin, and it is from a company called Argent Data Systems. Uh, in fact, this was the most expensive portion of this setup. And then I also purchased a two gigabyte SanDisk or SanDisk uh, SD card, and that is the maximum capacity that this Garmin will actually uh, receive. 
And I'm gonna try probably, not in this video, but at a later time to upgrade the map or at least do a partial map uh, for my area to the 2020 maps. Let's go ahead and take a look inside the box. And right up top, it looks like we have the GPS unit itself. And uh, I believe, according to the specs, this is a 3.5 inch uh, screen. It is a, I think it was a QVGA TFT display at a resolution of 320 by 240. Uh, not great by today's standards, but um, it's probably going to be just fine for our purposes. Also, the unit feels like really good construction. We've got the power button on the top. On the side, it looks like we have the area for our SD card, a mini USB. I uh, believe this is the port that either connects to the PC, but also connects to the radio. And then it looks like we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Uh, this unit also doubles as an MP3 player and audiobook player, which is kind of cool. On the back side, we have a speaker, and I believe this portion here is the GPS antenna. And this area here looks to be the area in which we will uh, mount it, and I believe there's another uh, adapter here that connects to provide the uh, USB power. So, really cool device already. I like what I'm seeing so far. And it looks like we just have a bunch of different manuals. We'll pull those out first. Okay, so this looks like it's registry or registration information. Um, on the other side, it's English, and it seems to have the um, all the information I need to register this, this device. Some safety information, which I don't think is gonna be a problem. Uh, looks like some quick start information, some battery tips, a travel kit. I believe this unit was able to accept other uh, customizations through uh, plug-in architecture using the SD card. That's something I'm not going to use. And this one's interesting. When I was looking at this unit, it looks like there was support for the er early audible.com days. I've been a subscriber since 2007. And uh, you can load up uh, audiobooks from Audible, presumably through the .aa files onto this device. So I may experiment with that just for the heck of it. Uh, looks like this is a Best Buy warranty plan, uh, not something that is of interest to me. And then a quick start reference guide. So seems all pretty straightforward. And then here is our a mini USB cable. Uh, so this is just to power the device uh, while it's running, but it could also be connected to uh, this side here to load new maps. And then this looks to be the suction cup for the window. So I will likely mount this uh, somewhere uh, in front of the radio. Looks like it has a ball mount. And then a really cool carrying case. Uh, there's something else in here. Yeah, this looks like it's the mount and also provides the uh, USB power for the device. So it looks like what we need to do is flip up the antenna. And it looks like the ball mount would roughly go in here and then we would power the USB or off the USB cable here. And the last thing in the box looks like to be an alternative mount, uh, maybe if we don't want to use the suction cup. So yeah, that's it guys. Um, like I said, I always like looking at this um, old technology. It's like a little time capsule. All right guys, so we're in the Jeep. Let's take a quick look at how I have the Garmin Nuvi 350 connected to the Kenwood. Uh, so first I've got the Garmin Nuvi on the suction cup mount and I have quite a few things racked here. So it's starting to look like a proper cockpit, I guess. So there are two cables coming off of the Garmin Nuvi. 
the first is this one here on the right. That's the cable that is connected to the Kenwood. It's the Argent Data Systems cable, and that is the uh, mini USB connector. There's also a mini USB connector on the back that's providing power. Um, I tightened up all the cables uh, a little bit too tight, so I can't show you the back side. So I basically have three cables coming out here. Uh, one of them is the cable for the uh, dash camera mount, so don't worry about that. But basically, I've got it kind of zip tied all the way down here. And uh, the two cables that are plugged into the cigarette adapter, uh, one is the power for the GPS and the other one is for the dash cam. The third cable is connected, kind of cinched up down here in this cargo netting. And that's the one that is connected to the Kenwood D17, or the Kenwood D710. And it's this cable right here. So it's not too bad. I mean, it, I think it looks pretty clean still. So the next thing we want to do is take a look at some of the uh, radio settings. And under uh, APRS, the settings that I did have to change... Uh, believe was for the GPS port. I had to set the baud rate to 4,800 bits per second input to GPS and the output was set to waypoint. And I believe for waypoint, uh, the default format may have been Kenwood. I just had to set it to NMEA and then uh, I already had the name set to nine characters. And that's pretty much it. Outside of that, I just have APRS on band A, fully configured. And uh, let's go ahead now and just turn on the car and let's see what we see on the Garmin Nuvi. All right, so now that we are um, online, let's go ahead and view the map. And uh, right off the bat, it looks like we're already seeing stations listed. So we've got this guy here, W6FPT, and the SSID is number eight. Looks like we have another one at the bottom there, KB7KFC. So that's pretty cool. And again, one of the cool features that um, I had mentioned that this unit does is if we go to menu and go to where to and we go to my locations we can go to favorites and you can actually see there that is the list of all the stations that are coming through and uh, all we need to do is be able to click one of these guys and uh, we can navigate directly to it so pretty cool stuff and uh, yeah maybe I'll go ahead and pull out the Jeep and uh, we'll see what we get all right guys I'm not really set up for this type of filming but uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's hit go here and see All right guys, so uh, we're in route and uh, I'm getting turn by turn directions with audio using offline maps. So for anybody who has a Kenwood D710GA, um, I will tell you this is actually pretty amazing to be able to reclaim a piece of 15 year old GPS technology and uh, use it today to uh, get reliable offline uh, maps that work nicely with APRS and the Kenwood. So this is the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and uh, be prepared, guys.